Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll make a start very shortly. Actually, just waiting for a few more people to join in. We'll just check. Kerry, can you hear me okay? Yeah, absolutely fine. Okay, excellent. Good stuff. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. We are actually live on Facebook and on, on Zoom. So um, if anyone has any questions that they want to ask on Zoom, then please use the Q&A and the chat function. If you'd like to ask any questions on Facebook, then please use the comments section at the um, underneath the uh, where you can see us, basically. And we'll try and get through as many as questions as we can towards the end. So. Um, We'll, we'll crack on. So, so today is, has been for many years called Blue Monday and we're not really sure how that term for one day of the year sort of helps anyone really. So we'd, we'd much prefer to rename it Green Monday in, in support of the um, health benefits that being outdoors can, can give everyone. So I know personally of many people to whom the outdoors has given purpose and a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction. So clearly an escape away from modern modern life, modern daily grind is, is something um, that we all need. Um, but is it as simple as just putting on our walking boots or our running shoes and heading out the door? So to answer those questions, we are delighted to be joined by Kerry McCarthy who is editor of Runner's World uh, UK magazine, um, a really passionate runner himself and a transformational life coach. So we've got Kerry for about 20 minutes today as he's quite a busy man. So we'll we'll kick off straight away. Um, hello, Kerry, hi. Um, hi, good afternoon. Kerry, you're, you're clearly successful in your career as an editor. Um, so, Tell us what, what took you down the road or down the route, I should say, of becoming a life coach as well. It was kind of a long path, really. I suppose the the short version would be it was a process of of self-discovery. Uh, in 2010, I um, had a quite a sort of traumatic relationship breakup. And for the first time in my life, I experienced a bout of depression. And when I went to uh, a counsellor after about six months of suffering in silence, my family begged me to, to take some action. Um, and I went to a counsellor who, uh, you know, after we'd been working together a few weeks, explained that while the relationship breakup had, you know, obviously had an effect on this, it wasn't that in and of itself that had caused my depression. It, it's, it, that was simply the trigger. Um, and that was basically a volcano waiting to explode because I had been brought up learning that you didn't talk about your problems you keep things to yourself, step off, step off a look, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was kind of an eye opener. I then went on some antidepressants and fast forward a few years. And after it was probably three or four more depressive episodes where I would go on the antidepressants, I would come back off them. Um, I'd given myself about three bouts of overtraining syndrome, which was kind of ironic given that I'm a health and fitness journalist. But I'd got into a routine where I would sign up for some ridiculous challenge. I would train like an absolute demon and flog myself, then make myself physically ill through adrenal fatigue and have to take some time off. During which time, a bit like Ricky Hatton between fights, if anyone remember that, remembers that boxer, I'd just booze and eat all the pies and put all the weight back on. And then I'd have to start again. And it wasn't until a few years ago, a friend pointed out to me, uh, and said, look, you're an experienced health and fitness journalist. There's clearly a reason why you're doing this to yourself. That's psychological. Um, and sometimes when, you know, you're in the eye of the storm, obviously you can't see what's blindingly obvious to other people. And that really made me stop and think. So I embarked on a, a program, a proper, uh, I had uh, psychotherapy, uh, hypnotherapy uh, for a couple of things, energy healing. I'm quite a curious person. And I believe that you know, life is there to be experimented with and lived. So I kind of throw myself into these things quite enthusiastically anyway. Um, and during that process, I discovered life coaching as well, which is a little bit to all the other different ones. And as well as helping me, for some reason, it just, it just lit me up. It just triggered something in me. And I thought, I want to do that as well. That's great. 
I've had such benefit from this. I want to help other people through this. So I trained and, and started doing that as well. Thanks, Kerry. That's, um, that's yeah, that's really good of you to share that. Um, the What advice would you give to develop a solid foundation to support stronger mental health through your own experience and, you know, obviously your, your life coaching experience as well? Hmm. If I had to distill it down, I'd, I would reuse a word that I used a minute ago. I would say, be curious, be your own best detective. I think in today's, you know, there were, there were many, many reasons, obviously, why people now today are struggling more than ever, even before the pandemic. Mental health was a big conversation, a growing conversation, part of the national narrative. Um, I think in the UK, we have something like, we have the, the highest use of antidepressant um, antidepressants in Western Europe, which is massive. I think particularly Brits because of our stiff upper lip kind of uh, persona, but all around the world, people think, or their instinct is to block things out, block bad things out. If you, have, if you suffer an anxiety attack or you wake up in a low mood um, or anything like that, anything that's negative to perceive to be negative, one's natural instinct is to go, I'm going to push that away. I'm going to ignore it. La, 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 finger in my ears. If, if I just ignore it, it will go away. And actually, whilst you don't want to get neurotic about it, a lot of the time, inviting those feelings on and walking towards them can absolutely be the best thing to do because you take the mystique out of it. And if you investigate what's happening, a lot of the time you'll find the solutions. So, you know, one, a really useful tip that I, that I give to clients and to people, um, which if anyone has ever used the Headspace meditation app, you will recognize this. There's a very recognized technique um, for dealing with your thoughts called labeling. Um, and instead of identifying with your thoughts and going, oh my God, my boss has just shouted at me or I forgot to do that or I've messed this up or whatever it is, it's just simply to go, I'm experiencing fear. I am experiencing agitation. I'm experiencing low mood today and you are disassociating yourself from them. So if you imagine that you're sitting by the side of the road and your thoughts are cars going past and you're just watching them go past instead of getting into the car, you're just watching them. And a lot of the time that helps people. So I would encourage people to, when you experience some kind of strong emotion, to stop, make a note of it. Um, journaling can help here. And then, you know, if you have the time, I'm not saying, you, you know, you have to stop where you are, particularly you're busy or you're homeschooling or something, like that, but make a quick note on your phone to scribble something down and say, massive pang of anxiety, what caused it? Notice that this was on the news or somebody said that, or I thought about this. And if you keep a note of it over time, you will start to notice uh, the triggers that cause you to have those behaviours and you can do something about it. That's really interesting. Thank you. The, um, I guess, so what, what's made the biggest difference to your mindset? In, um, has it been your love of the outdoors? You were talking about how you were entering for almost gruelling kind of punishing, punishing kind of events you know, at one stage in your life and, um, mm. you know, or is it a combination of both? Is it kind of, yeah. It's a combination of things. There's, for me, there was a real kind of hallelujah moment, particularly with regards to the use of the antidepressants and whether you should use them or not and how far you should go with them. I read a book by um, quite a well-known journalist uh, called Johan Hari, He's half Swiss, half English, I think. Uh, and a, a few years ago, he wrote a book called Lost Connections. And it's now regarded as the, one of the kind of like seminal groundbreaking works on mental health. And, you know, when you, you know the bit in the book where it's got all the kind of the, the quotes from people who've read it, who say, yeah, read this book, it's great. And it's got, you know, Elton John, Davina McCall, Oprah, all sorts of people who've gone, this book is groundbreaking. And the reason why it is, is this guy, uh, spent a couple of years going around the world interviewing the, the world's leading experts in anything relating to mental health. And the established wisdom seems to be now that there are essentially nine reasons for depression and anxiety. Um, and I scribble them down, so I'm just going to quickly whiz through them. 
And basically, if you're having a tough time, it means because you are experiencing one of these disconnection from meaningful work, um, where you feel you can make a difference and you are respected, disconnection from people, disconnection from meaningful values, childhood trauma, disconnection from respect, disconnection from the natural world, which obviously we'll come on to, disconnection from hope for a better future. And then the last two are what modern society is overwhelmingly skewed towards currently, which are the role of genes and biology, i.e. saying, I was just born like this, or I've inherited the depressive or anxious gene. So in there somewhere will be the answer to why you are feeling the way you are. And for me, in terms of what made the biggest difference, it was working with myself enough to be able to work out what those triggers were because it's not simplistic enough to say okay my name is Kerry therefore I I suffer from number four on that list it will be different things at different times so it's it's learning what works for you at what moments you know particularly at the moment with the pandemic obviously people are feeling disconnected from, from people um, even before that you know, with the, with the rise of social media and people starting to work from home or work remotely or having breakout zones in offices. As a modern society, we're moving away from what we evolved to be, which was work in a tribe, do things together. And we're, we're, we're quite lonely. And I worked out for myself. I'm absolutely at my best when I'm collaborating with other people. And some days I wake up and I feel really rotten and I realise it's because I've been stuck at my desk in my home office for four days and I haven't really spoken to anyone. You have to do something about it. Equally, I might not have got outside or been eating crap food or I haven't been doing any one of the number of things that I've worked out over time for my personal toolkit for making myself feel better. Um, but obviously within that, being outdoors and taking exercise is, is, is huge. For me personally, it's a huge part of my life. I couldn't live without it. So that's, so that's great. So that's kind of got to focus on yourself and, you know, these other things then help to deal with that as well but putting yourself first is really important sort of message yeah it's it's so important and I think again the the instinct is you know when people say put yourself first focus on yourself it's kind of an instinct to go well isn't that selfish isn't that a bit navel gazing you know particularly if you recommend to people you know I wouldn't you know recommend some kind of therapeutic process there's almost that perception that if a person buys a course of therapy or coaching or something even similar to that, that there's somehow some kind of like Woody Allen character in a movie, slightly neurotic, you know, obsess themselves. But actually there is only one of you. There is only ever going to be one version of you as you are now in the history of this universe. So why not absolutely make sure you are the best version of you that you can be? Because if you are the best version of you that you can be, that's going to trickle out to all your other relationships. Think about how you are when you're firing all cylinders and work's going well and your home life's going well. Everyone loves you and you love yourself. So get the core of it right, which is you, and the rest of it will absolutely follow. Great advice. Thank you. Um, just on sort of moving to your love of, of, of running, a um, mm. couple of questions on that, really. The, uh, what, what do you prefer, trail, trail or road running and, and, and why? I'd say uh, it might sound like a bit of a non-answer, but I'd say both equally. Um, <laughs> as I've got older, I've been running for about, I think about 18 years now. As I've got older, I've, I've moved over more to trail running. In my head, everyone will have a different view, but in my head, I see road running as almost like, that's the running that you do when you're training for an event and you decide you want to crack a PB and you're gonna push yourself. And for me, getting off road and getting out in nature is the time for me to leave my watch at home and just get out and meander about and you know absorb myself in what's going on um the the japanese have a lovely phrase called forest bathing which mm. is what they use to describe simply communing with nature which again you know it might seem slightly hippieish and tree hugging but it's what we're evolved to do um and i read i think i read recently that the average american spends 93 percent of their time indoors um there wasn't a stat for Europeans or Brits, but I would imagine it's not that that different. I mean, imagine being being locked up for all that time. We don't have to imagine it. We are locked up at the moment. Yeah. Now imagine that being your, your permanent state. We'd all go bonkers. So getting outside and reconnecting with, look at those birds flying overhead. I can feel, you know, the wind on my face. 
running there's nothing like running through a massive forest or even a park where there are trees for kind of reconnecting to that sense of majesty of nature and actually research shows that when we're outside in nature as humans we feel we feel reassured it can really help with your calm and your mental health because you are suddenly more aware of being part of something bigger and that's reassuring because you have to relinquish control to the mountains and the sea and the parks and everything else um so it's just it's one of the best medicines that you can get i would i would say so it's interesting so you use road running as more of a kind of training sort of thing person trying to smash personal best and trail is more just enjoying it going for the freedom and escapism is that that kind of it yeah i think so and you know there are a few companies springing up now that um offer instead of offering competitive races they will offer guided runs particularly outside you know in areas just outside of cities if you're somebody that's a city dweller um i think there's a company there's actually there's a company called one of them is called um runaway adventures mm-hmm. and they will offer guided runs so if you live in london and or leeds or wherever and think well i'd like to get out a bit further out from my local parts so i'm not sure where you can sign up to one of these runs and they'll just guide you along and it costs you know like six seven quid or something and they'll take you through you know a different length run according to your ability at a particular speed and it's just about being with other people and being outside in nature and nobody gives a monkey what time you're running or what your splits are or how far it's just about the act and of taking the sheer joy of moving your body yeah no, that's great yeah we, we work with one called um adventure running company i think it's based in france similar nice. similar idea the girls on trails up in scotland yeah it's, yeah it's great it's a great idea um so is it, I think you've just touched on it really, but as a keen runner, um, what what do you get out of it? What's your kind of, you know, you, you're kind of going out for your 6 a.m. run. It's maybe dark outside, maybe not this time of year, but dark outside. What's your motivation to sort of get out of bed and put your trainers on and get out? What do you sort of get out of it? I think for me, it comes from the experience of knowing what it gives me and also how I'll feel if I don't, frankly. And, excuse me, this can be transposed onto all forms of exercise, obviously not just running, so hiking, mountaineering, whatever. But there is so much research behind the benefits of, of, you know, of movement and exercise and what it gives you. Um, You know, I can rattle off half a dozen here. You know, it'll improve your serotonin, the the happiness hormone, your dopamine, which is that reward hormone, the same, the same little flip that you get when you get an email come through or a social media post or you've eaten a particularly satisfying meal or anything like that. Increase your immune system. Um, it makes you more productive. Um, it improves your sex life. I'm sure the researchers that did the study into that had fun doing that one. Um, it improves your memory, your self-confidence, better sleep, better skin. Um, you know, the list is, is endless. And it actually, um, there's some evidence to show now that it actually does make you overall happier. There's a thing called the Oxford happiness questionnaire um, that Oxford University brought out periodically and people answer um, this questionnaire and it gives you a, a score between one and six where one is, um, you know, I'm deeply unhappy and six is I'm skipping around like a lamb in a field. And the UK average score on this one to six, it comes out as four, um, but they they, they um, made uh, a couple of thousand park runners you know people who do park run on a saturday morning take the questionnaire and their average score came out of 4.4 so the runners overall were on margin a bit happier than than people who didn't exercise okay that's interesting yeah that's great i mean for for me i I certainly get that sense of completion from doing a run that work seldom gives you because it's just a i feel like you're on a bit of a treadmill you know, oh, God, completed yeah. one task, it's straight onto the next. So it's, it's, nice it's a that. primal thing, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, we are evolved to move and we need to move our bodies. And yeah, if you can, you know, half the time I'll take my phone and my watch and all the gadgetry and half the time I'll just leave it at home. And, you know, arguably I enjoy myself more when I completely disconnect myself from the world around me. And in today's society, particularly if you've, you know, you've got kids and you're homeschooling at the moment or you have other types of dependence, there's a lot of pressure on us all. And that time when you're outside, whether it's an amble or a brisk walk or a run or whatever it is, if you can leave the tech, you've just got time for thinking and reflection and being uncontactable, which sometimes for that brief period is a wonderful thing. 
absolutely agree with that one. Um, Carrie, you, you've been involved, I think, with um, a new initiative called Run Some. Can you, mm. can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, so, <clears throat> excuse me, Run Some is a campaign that I co-founded with, um, on behalf of Runners World magazine, with another company called Active Things. And the idea is to get people to run some more everyday journeys. So this is for people who want to take up exercise, maybe are you know, thinking about taking it running. They've seen the explosion in the last year since the first lockdown last March, but they fall into that category of people who think running's not for me. I'm too unfit. I don't know what I'm doing. I'll be embarrassed. Don't you have to have a watch and, you know, short split shorts in order to do it. And running to improve or moving your body to improve your mental health is obviously as we're discussing more critical now than ever before but it can be fit in your everyday life so something like 20 percent of all car journeys in the uk are less than a mile because we all we all do it it's like oh i just need to take them to the post office so i forgot something at a supermarket i'll jump in the car the idea of the run some campaign is to take the current figure of people who say they run everyday journeys, which is about 240,000, according to data, and double that in the next year. So run or run walk to get that pint of milk, to do the school run, to drop off a parcel, to get a paper and then take it to your nans and incorporate it into your everyday life. And you don't have to run the whole way if you're completely new. You can run a bit, walk a bit, or mostly walk and then run a bit. Um, but it's about fitting in that movement to help your, your mind and your body in a way that fits around your life as well. And it actually has a, a practical function. Um, so we're working with, you know, we're kind of building a coalition of brands who've come on board who are keen to support this. We're lobbying government. Um, the government last year announced an active travel budget of 2 billion. So it's gonna be engaging in changing infrastructure and encouraging people to get around in their own steam more. Currently the provision with what the government is talking about is just is cycling and walking so we're trying to get running um kind of accepted on there as well um so it's there's there's a, a sort of a shorter term focus of let's see how many people we can get signing up to this campaign and changing their lives in the next year and all, but also try and create longer term change as well um for those who are interested in investigating it more they can go to runsome.org um, and there's also for the next two weeks i'll just add there's an opportunity to become the running mayor of your city. We're encouraging people to apply to become the running mayor of Leeds, Nottingham, wherever it is you live, Reading. Uh, and the idea of that role is that if you're somebody who's found exercise has helped you and you want to help your community, um, it will be your job to champion the campaign in your community, tell people about benefits of running, about exercise, lobby MPs, tell the council where the roads need more pavements, any ideas you have to get your community running and you want to shout about it and you want to be part of the campaign, um, you can apply in a very simple one um, single form on our website. Um, and we will be going through the selection process and picking the mayors at the end of this month. So runsome.org if anyone wants to check that out. Great. And um, Charlotte on Facebook has just said she loves this idea, Kerry. Uh, great idea to get people taking the first steps towards a healthier lifestyle without being too overwhelming. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant concept. I think it will. Uh, yeah, hopefully it gains, you know, well, it's already gaining traction, but hopefully it will gain more. Yeah. Um, yeah. About showing people that they, you know, if they start small, if you chunk it down and into really manageable amounts, you know, even just I'm going to get out the door. Even if I go back after two minutes, I'm going to get my stuff on and I'm going to go out the door. Start wherever you're comfortable with and take it from there and move at your own speed because it's all about you. It's not about what anyone else is doing. That's great. Thank you. Um, one of my final questions was going to be because we're sort of running out of time is um, if you were to close your eyes and imagine a calm and peaceful place, where would it be or what would it look like? <laughs> OK, I'm not sure I should admit to this. <laughs> um, so I'm quite connected to my to my inner child. Um, and I think, you know, we all know what joy we can get from watching animations particularly if you've got kids and, or you have children in your life in some capacity and actually funny enough my my kind of happy place in my head is the flower farm from a, an animation called Ferdinand the Bull um, which was like a, it was a car it was a film that came out about three years ago um, 
And I don't know why it should be. It's, you know, the, the film's about like a bull that doesn't like, doesn't want to be a bullfighter because he's a pacifist and he, he ends up living on a, a, a flower farm. But in that animation, there's a beautiful stone farm cottage with trailers up the side and, um, you know, flowers everywhere and a patchwork of fields and a beautiful hill in the, in the, in the distance with a solitary apple tree on top where the, the bull and his, his female human friend play during the day. But for some reason, I find that really calming. So when I want to go to my happy place, I just imagine that, but I, I kind of transpose it into a proper, you know, non-cartoon everyday form in my head. Um, but I, I do think it's really important to, for everyone to have one in your head and to immediately be able to go there, um, particularly if you're somebody who's trying to get going on something like meditation. Um, it can really help to have something that does it for you. Um, and as I've just obviously admitted with, with that embarrassing admission, it needs to be something that really speaks to you and not something that you think is cool or that you think um, people will find impressive or that other people have said they're happy places. It's got to be something that resonates with you in your head. That's great advice. I love your happy place. I think it's, uh, well, it's fantastic. Great. <laughs> um, brilliant. Thank you for that, Kerry. That's been really insightful. Uh, we've got a few few questions coming through, if you don't mind. We'll just sure. pop these through to you. Um, so um, James asks, is there, um, where, if you need more, more advice on mental health, where would you to recommend that people head to? Have you got any, um, I guess, the Samaritans and charities like- I would say, mind? yeah. I would say obviously the Samaritans and, and, and Mind are obviously two good places where you can get going. Um, I'm obviously obviously more than happy to help people. I think my Instagram handle is on the screen. So if people want to, to, met, to DM me on there, I will obviously always reply to everyone. I'll get back to you straight away. Um, whether it's you, you know, you want more advice from me or you want some, you know, extra resources, I can put more thought into thinking about what you particularly might need according to your situation. The other thing that I would recommend that I'd recommend to clients as well is, and this might sound facile, but it's really not, is I would really take advantage of Google. The advantage of Google now with the algorithms, as we've all, as we all discover, is that you can put in almost any question or query and somebody will have answered it, be asked and had it answered before. And the algorithms can work out exactly what it is you're getting at. And the way that I navigate personally, my way around, is I think in my head, how am I feeling today? What's my question? What do I need resolved now? And I just type it into Google and it's through that way. And I disappear down a rabbit hole of following links and you know, I might read a piece and go, um, that's not doing it for me, that's doing it for me. And I end up on forums or YouTube videos. And I just, again, I get curious and I investigate and I make myself my own best detective. There is all the knowledge in the world out there so I would say to people, rather than going to one particular resource and saying, this is where I always go, I would take the attitude of saying, I'm going to think about what I need, then I'm going to go to this incredible mind-blowing resource we have where all the information in the world is out there, and I'm just going to pick up some threads and follow them and see how far they go, and you will inevitably find something that works for you. That's, a, that's an interesting interesting view i've not i've not heard that before but it, it makes absolute sense that's great thank you um julie asked this is this is more about running um so she tried couch to 5k for three weeks mm. but found that her knees became so painful that she could hardly walk have you got any recommendations um she was only running for a maximum of a few minutes have you got any experience of um running ailments I do. One of the, you know, one of the things we, you know, I learned very on in my career at Run as well, just that every every body's and every body's situation is is different. So unfortunately, as much as I'd love to say, oh, that's such and such syndrome, or you just need to do this cunning trick, the, the truthful answer is it could be any one of a number of things. So if it's something that hopefully you're determined to crack on with and do, if only you can resolve this issue. I know we can't get out and about too much at the moment. I would recommend sorting out a Zoom um, appointment with a physio. Um, I would always err uh, on what I will say, I was, if, it's, if it's muscular pain, so it's something to do with a, a sporting endeavour in this case, I would always go to a sports therapist or a physio, in this case digitally, rather than your GP. Um, 
because they're, they're much, much more likely to be able to get to the root of the problem. Um, you know, you can either go to generalist sports ones. That, um, there's a company called Pure Sports Med that are very good. Um, Balance Physio, um, who, who take care of people nationwide as well. Uh, and there's one in London called Move uh, Clinics for anyone who's London based who are uh, kind of running specific. Um, but again, you know, it could be anything from you need to start off with more walking first or you need to wear some supports to start with or you have some flexibility uh, issues or muscular strength issues so you know the answer is in there somewhere but you know if you want to keep doing something while you investigate this you're like okay i want to you know so i don't lose my momentum i i would just park the the catch to 5k program for now and just go whatever i was supposed to be doing in terms of running i'm still going to get out the door but i'm going to walk it and i'm going to power walk it as well so really walk fast, walk at whatever the, the fastest speed you can without your, your knee pain kicking in. Um, but keep getting out there. Don't let it dissuade you from, um, from starting on this endeavour, which I think is brilliant. Fantastic. Thanks, Kerry. Well, we, we've crammed in quite a lot of information and advice into 20, 25 minutes. I really appreciate your, your time this afternoon. For anyone who wants to look back on some of the advice that Kerry's given and missed it, um, then you can watch this again on Facebook and we'll also upload it to YouTube as well. So um, you can take notes on the next time you watch it. But um, Kerry, thank you again for your time. It's oh, been thanks very much for having me. Fascinating having you to chat and uh, really appreciate it. And thank you everyone for joining in this afternoon and uh, have a great afternoon. Thank you.